but the title of today's message, if you want to grab your notes, it's called Home for Christmas. Home for Christmas. But before we go home for Christmas tonight, um, there are probably two things that are true of you right now. There's probably two things. One is you're probably a little distracted. You know, for some of you coming here tonight, it was just a, you know, something to do with the family, check it off the list. And, and you might be thinking about the 95 things you have to get done before tomorrow morning. You know, some of you moms, dads, you're thinking, uh, how late am I going to be up opening presents tonight? You know, you, you maybe still have food to buy. You might, you know, need, need to wrap more presents. You, you gotta, you're, gotta go to church. You gotta prepare the food. You gotta, everything's just gotta be right. So you might be a little distracted. The other thing that is probably true about you is that you're probably a little tired. Can I get an amen? Is anybody just a little sleepy? Right? Hopefully because we had coffee out in the lobby, it means you stay awake for the message, but that's, that's another story. But there's only one word that describes really what we try to do at this time of year, that we try to accomplish in the first three weeks of December, and I would call that word madness. Why? Because 80% of the parties that you will attend in the entire calendar year you know, we cram into three weeks, right? It's just a little nuts. And then we say, hey, on top of that, let's redecorate the whole house inside and out. It's gonna be awesome. And then, since we got plenty of time, let's buy something for every person that we've ever, ever met, right? And wrap it and give it away. Let's bake every cookie in the cookbook uh, because we got lots of extra time, right? And that's gonna add to all the extra calories that we're eating uh, during the season. And then just to make it even more fun, let's think up everybody that we've ever met in our entire life and send them a letter, right? And uh, take uh, family pictures because the whole family always loves family picture taking sessions, right? Right? Amen? Maybe not, right? But it's no wonder that we get to this point in the Christmas season and we might just be a little bit worn out. And so if that's you, just one, I wanna say um, you're in the right place. And I wanna begin this service tonight by asking all of us to just take a deep breath. Can we, just, can we just pause just for a moment? Just take a deep breath and just settle into this moment. Because we're at that time where what will happen will happen and what got done got done and what didn't didn't, and it's okay. And let's settle in right now to this moment. And you might even pray a little prayer right now and just say, God, help me slow down. Help me slow down right now and not miss this moment. Let's lay aside our distractions and focus for just the next few minutes because God wants your attention. He wants your attention. And the next few minutes could be, if you allow it, could be the turning point of your entire life. Christmas is about connecting with God, plain and simple. Christmas is about having a relationship with God. I love what it says in Jeremiah 3.14 in the CEV translation. It says, you belong to me, so come home. Plain and simple. You belong to me, so come home. I love that. One of the fundamental truths of life, one of the greatest meanings of life is that you and I belong to God. We belong to him. You weren't meant to belong to your job or to your career. You weren't meant to belong to your past and the things that you regret. You were meant to belong, you weren't meant to belong to other people or expectations of others, thank God, right? You were made to belong to God. He knows you, he loves you, and he has a purpose for you. He knows exactly why you're created. Why? Because he created you and you belong to him. And God wants you to come home to him. And so this theme coming home for Christmas, you know, we've seen this all over the place. It's well known. You find it in songs. You find it in movies. You find it in books and poetry. And it is true that when everything just falls into place, there really is no place like home. Your favorite blanket, your favorite chair, your favorite cookie, your favorite drink, your favorite, you know, TV, movie, your favorite everything. There's no place like home. But movies conveniently forget two facts about our earthly homes all the time, especially Hallmark. But we won't talk about that. The first is that no home is perfect. Have you realized that? No home is perfect. I love how the Christmas story starts in Luke chapter two, verses one through seven. Let's read it together. At that time, the Roman emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant 
of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. And so let me just stop right there and paint the picture. Joseph is going home, but it didn't feel like home. It was the home of his ancestors. It was the home of his family, but he now lived somewhere else, and it probably didn't feel like home to him. And let's, let's see why. It says, he traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while we, they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in snugly, him snugly in, in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. So just a little backstory in case you haven't heard the story. An angel appeared to Mary and told her she was going to conceive a son. But the kink is, is that she was a virgin. And, but the Holy Spirit said that the whole, or the angel said the Holy Spirit would overshadow her and the power of God would, would come into her and she would see this baby. And so here were two engaged people and Mary was about to have a baby and there was probably a lot of questions in their community. Why is she pregnant? They're not even married yet. What's going on? Why isn't Joseph divorcing her? Man, it was the, it was the picture perfect recipe for awkward. Most people aren't gonna probably believe, oh, the baby was conceived by the Holy Spirit, right? Of course. No. They were going home, and it didn't feel like home. And maybe you have had that happen in your life, maybe because of some choices that you made, probably not because, you know, you were a virgin that conceived, because that's only happened once ever. But maybe you're going home, and it doesn't feel like home, because, you know, people think things about you, or some things were said, or some relationships were broken, or, or, or time has passed, and relationships have changed, and, and there's just a lot of water under the bridge, and going home doesn't really feel like home anymore. And so when you think about Joseph returning home, it sure seems like it must not have felt like home to him. You know, I, I, I asked myself this question as I read this, you know, did, did other family members not have to travel with them? Would they not travel with them because of the circumstances of, of Mary's pregnancy? Why were they alone? Were they shunned because of the baby? They're, they must have not known any relatives in Bethlehem because they couldn't find any place to stay. Can you imagine going home and not having a bed? Maybe Bethlehem was their family's home, but so much time had passed, it didn't feel like home anymore. And maybe you hear, hey, this pastor wants me to come home to God, but you associate that with church. And maybe you've been to church before, and, and that sure didn't feel like home. Songs you didn't know, rituals you didn't understand, things happening that didn't make sense to you. You know, maybe somebody that was supposed to be an example of what it means to follow Christ was, was hateful to you or mean to you, and, and, and you're having trouble, trouble making sense of it all. And so maybe when I say come home to God, you're like, yeah, if that means church, I'm not sure that's what I want. You feel like there isn't a place for you. You feel shame for your past. You maybe even think that even God doesn't want you here. You see, when you watch a movie about coming home at Christmas, it's this idea of perfection where everybody gets along, everybody loves every gift, no food is burned, no one is late, there's never any problems, no one's cheating at Monopoly. It's a wonderful, happy time, right? But reality is, there's often conflict at home. There's often disappointments at home. There's often unfulfilled expectations at home. And the second thing that we know in reality is that no home is permanent. No home is permanent. I don't live in the same house I always lived. Even my, fam my, my childhood home, you know, we've all moved away. And, and, it's just, and it's just a fact of life. And it's okay. I'll live, right? But it's just like, oh, that, 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 that childhood home that was so dear, it's not permanent. And we see this in scripture in Hebrews 13, 14, where it says, for this world is not our permanent home. We're looking forward to a home yet to come. Wow. There's a lot there. So no home is perfect and no home is permanent. 
The kids grow up, people move away, loved ones sometimes die. Some of you have lost a loved one this year, and this Christmas is particularly hard because you're missing that certain someone, and it just plain hurts. And it's just another reminder that no home is permanent. That's why this Christmas, I'd like to, for you to consider a different kind of coming home at Christmas, a spiritual homecoming, a coming home to God. You know, we all belong to God, but it's human nature to forget. You can go days and weeks and months, maybe even years without thinking about him. We get distracted by our careers and our families and our dreams and our hopes and our finances and our debts and our desires. It's very easy to shove God out of your life, even though he's the reason that you're here. And even though, whether you like it or not, you belong to him. So, you need to come back to him. You may ask, what kind, you know, what kind of welcome will I expect if I come home to God this Christmas? And fortunately, that's what the Bible is very clear about and what we're gonna talk about for the rest of the message tonight. So when you come home to God, number one, fill it in in your notes if you want or on the Mosaic Church app or, or you could just listen. The notes are on the screen. But number one, you'll find his love and forgiveness. When you come home to God, you can expect wide open arms and all the love in the world and all the forgiveness that you can ever imagine. Why is that? Because in Matthew 1, verse 21, when the angel came to Joseph, he told that the angel told Joseph, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. He'll save them from their sins. And so in the midst of Joseph and Mary getting their life turned upside down, this unexpected pregnancy, hard for people to believe, and, and, and not really feeling at home, Jesus Christ leaves his home in heaven to come to home on earth, Right? Why? For a very specific purpose. For a very specific purpose. So that we could get to know him and so that God could say, I love you and I want to forgive you. Because this baby that came, he came under this principle that he was going to be the Savior. That he was going to be the Savior. And so it doesn't matter who you are or what you've done or how long you've done it. There's love and, the forgive and forgiveness when you come home to God this Christmas. God says, I want you to come home to my love and my forgiveness. He wants you. And some of you just need to think about that. God really wants you to come home. You know, because God's love is so big and because Jesus came to do this, it makes me wonder what would keep us from coming home? Maybe it's the fear of rejection. Maybe you think to yourself, God wouldn't want me now. I'm too far away. I've done too many things he probably wouldn't approve of. I'm too far separated from God to be brought back to him now. And I would just like to lovingly encourage you that that's just plain wrong. It's just plain wrong. The Bible says in Romans chapter eight that nothing, everybody say nothing. Nothing in all creation is able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Isn't that so great? Nothing. I don't care who you are or what you've done or how long you've done it. God says, I still love you and I still want to forgive you. Just come home. Man, that verse, something jumps out at me. It says, for he will save his people from their sins. And so he came to save people from their sins, to save them out of it, to pull them away from it and to a better life. And so the love of God doesn't ignore sin. It doesn't say everything you've done in your life is okay and, you, and just, just be okay with it. It's not what it says. No, God, the, the, the love of God doesn't excuse sin. No, God took this love so far that he paid for that sin with his life. Man, what a cool thought. He paid for it with his life. He loves you as you are but he loves you way too much to leave you that way. And so what did he do? He said, you know what? I'm gonna pay the debt of your sin with my life. He's gonna suffer, he's gonna die, and he's gonna be the savior of the world. And so Jesus left his throne in heaven, his heavenly home, so that you could come home to him. He took on flesh 
I love what it says in 1 John 4, 9 through 10. It says, God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. And so Jesus, this baby that we celebrate, grew up, went through some really hard stuff. He was tortured. He died on a cross. He rose again on the third day, and he did all of that to pay the debt for our sin. And so when you ask yourself, will God really forgive me? Is there enough love in God's heart to cover up what I've done and to cast my sin as far as the east is from the west? I just want you to think and imagine Jesus having grown up into a man and going to the cross and his arms stretched out wide, nailed to the cross and his feet nailed to the cross and him standing there and he was, or him, him nailed to the cross and in essence he was saying, I'd rather die than live without you. That's how much God loves you. He loves you. And so when you come home, you can count on it. There's gonna be love and there's gonna be forgiveness. The second thing that you'll find when you come home is his peace and his strength. His peace and his strength. Isaiah 9, 6 says, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Underline that last part. He's the Prince of Peace. He's a mighty God. He's strong, and he's going to give you all the peace that you need. And I love putting these two things together because peace is kind of quiet and it's kind of, it's just still, it's that quiet confidence that we have. And at the same time, there's this strength. How many of you know that when you're with your big brother or that person, you know, I've had some, I've had some big, strong friends in my life. And when, if I, when I'm with them, I just feel a little bit more safe, right? I just feel a little bit more safe. And it's kind of like that with God. There's peace when you understand how strong God is. Peace when things get chaotic in life and strength when you feel like you don't have the energy to go on. So where do we get that reservoir of power and and peace that gives you the ability to keep going in the midst of crisis, in the midst of chaos, tragedy, or when certain things just completely zap all of your energy in life? Where do we get it? Some of us try to develop it on our own, right? You need to say, well, I'll just depend on my own energy because after all, I went keto or I went paleo, or I only eat whole foods, I went vegan this last year, gluten-free, I've got all my energy back, and I just wanna lovingly encourage you, that's great, and you're gonna be a lot more physically healthy, but at some point, you're gonna encounter something in life that just zaps all the strength you have, and you're not gonna have any left. You're gonna run out, because human energy always runs out, but God's power doesn't. Jesus comes along and says, if you're tired, if you're carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest for your soul. I love that. I love that verse because it says the exact opposite of what most of us think that God will say to them. Most of us think if we come back to God, he's gonna be like, where have you been? What have you been doing? What's wrong with you? But no, he said, come on, I'll give you rest. Come on, there's forgiveness. Let's start a new path. Let's go, let's go a new way. I love that. A lot of times we think that God's just gonna give us more rules and more restrictions and more regulations. And while God's way is always better, God, through, in Jesus in scripture, when, when people came to him that were full of sin and full of shame, what did he say? Hey, he said, I don't condemn you, but go and sin no more, right? He helped them up instead of pushing them down. And so Jesus says, come home to me, and I'll give you rest. Have you ever felt like giving up? Giving up on your marriage or on the hope of getting married? Giving up on your career or your health or your kids or a dream? Or maybe you're stuck in in addiction and, and you just, you're giving up. Listen, God brought you here today so that he could say this to you. Don't give up. Come home to his peace and his power. Whatever you're going through, God's power can get you through. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, 
by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And so when you come with what you got, here I am, God, and you make him a part of it, you, you invite him into the situation, he's gonna give you peace and he's gonna give you power. The problem is that most of the time we just don't slow, slow down enough to ask him for it. Peace comes from having God's presence in your life. The third thing that you'll find when you come home for Christmas to God is you'll find his hope and his joy. In Luke chapter two, nine through 10, it says, suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. He said, I bring you good news that will be great joy to all the people. It's gonna bring great joy to all the people. And so as my, my dad so eloquently presented this last Sunday, and if you weren't here, you need to check it out online and listen to that message. But there were shepherds out guarding their flocks. This multitude of angels shows up to them and says, hey, Jesus is coming, right? And what did, he, what did they say? Don't be afraid. I bring you good news, that's hope, that will bring you great joy to all the people. So because of Jesus, you can have hope and you can have joy. Hope when situations seem hopeless and joy when you feel grief or sadness or depression and you need it. Romans 15, 13 says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Love that. Love it. And so what does that tell me? that the more I trust in God, the more my life is filled with hope and joy. And I trust him. The more I trust God, the more my life is filled with peace. The more I trust God, I have what I need. And so if I don't have hope, if I don't choose joy, if peace isn't present, it means one thing. I'm taking my eyes off Jesus and I'm not coming home to him. But if you trust Jesus, with your life, he'll forgive your past, he'll provide for your present, and he'll secure your future. That's hope, knowing where you're going, knowing that this world is not your home, that this, this home that we have now is temporary, it's not perfect. Man, I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm longing for a better home. I'm longing for a better day, and, and I know it's gonna happen because my hope is anchored in Jesus. And so I just wanna encourage you with everything I have in me today, choose Jesus. Don't reject what he's done for you. Don't let this be just another holiday. Don't let this just be another time of celebration. Don't, don't let this be just another day you check off your calendar because it's what you do at Christmas. You see, one day, Jesus wants to take you home to be with him in his home, in that heavenly home which is a perfect home. And it will be a permanent home. And it's called heaven. It's a real place. It really exists. Let me say that again. It's a real place. And it really exists. And we have one life and one chance to decide if we wanna join in there. One chance. And I don't know how many days you're gonna live. I don't know how many days I'm gonna live. Today could be one of your chances. It could be your last chance. You never know. And the longer you live, the more you understand that. Can I get an amen? amen. And I don't know if you had a wonderful home growing up or not, but whether you had a wonderful family or not, there are some needs that your family can meet, but there are some needs that could never be met by even the most perfect earthly family. There are some needs in your life that only God can meet. And so God's inviting you to come back home this Christmas. Only God, only God can give you the hope 
and the joy and the strength and the peace and the love and the forgiveness that you're longing for. Only him. That's why this Christmas, you need to not just come home to a family. You need to come home to God and his family and what he wants to do in your life. And so let me close with this today. Why did Jesus Christ come at Christmas? He came because he didn't want to love you from a distance. He came to show you the way home. He left his home to show you the way to his home. And so come home to Jesus tonight. If you could just bow your heads and close your eyes. I want you to quiet your heart now and think about it. Are you home with God? Have you decided, made that conscious choice to accept his love and his forgiveness? Have you said, Jesus, here's my life. Here's my life. I don't want to just go to church. I want a real relationship with you. I want to experience that peace and that joy that, that is fueling my life and helping me to, 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 to live and follow you in the way that, that honors you. Amen. If you, if you say, hey, this is it's time. It's time to come home to Jesus. If that's you this Christmas, with every head bowed and every eye closed, and I know that there's some distractions in the room, and that's okay, because this is just about you and Jesus. If that's you and say, hey, I wanna come home to Jesus, with nobody looking around, if that's you, just raise your hand, and this isn't for me. This is saying, God, I wanna, I wanna give my life to you. That very reason that you came to save the people from their sins, I, and you say, hey, Joe, I need saving. I need to accept that free gift of salvation that Jesus came for. That's me, and I wanna come home this Christmas. Man, thanks so much for those that raised their hands. You could put them down. I wanna encourage you right at your seat in your own words to invite Jesus to be the Lord of your life. You don't have to pray a special prayer. The Bible is just really clear that, that you need to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus rose from the dead and you'll be saved. And when you give your life to him and you make a decision to follow him all the rest of the days of your life, the Bible's really clear, you're saved. It doesn't matter how you feel, it's what's real. And you can come home to Jesus. Thanks for joining us online at Mosaic Church. We hope today's message was life-changing and useful. For more info, visit mosaiccincinnati.com.